Acesta este Curious Lion Podcast, prezentat de ING. Hello and welcome to the Curious Lion Podcast, uh, brought to you by ING. I am Vedan Diescu and today we're going to talk about what's beyond banking. And it's not uh, unusual to think, uh, think about this because uh, banking is not just keeping your money, take a credit and so on. So today we're going to talk with Katarina Herman, who is head of platforms and beyond banking at ING Group. And before jumping into the conversation, I want to just say some uh, words about about her activity and her path um, until she became the head of platforms and beyond banking. So in 1998, uh, Katarina joined ING where she was uh, the head of marketing at ING in Germany. In 2007, uh, she moved to ING Austria as CEO and general manager, and she returned to the ING uh, Germany in Frankfurt in 2011. Since March 2018, she is the head of platform and beyond banking. Katarina, nice to have you at the Curious Land podcast. Yeah, thanks for the nice introduction. Hello. <laughs> so... I said, I said also, I said that um, uh, you are head of platforms and beyond banking. So let's start with just a bit of history um, uh, from 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 ING. So when did ING start to think about uh, an integrated platform that goes just beyond what we think um, it was banking uh, in the last few years? Yeah. Now, maybe let me start by saying that that innovation and think beyond the status quo, um, you can say that that is in the genes of of ING. Yeah. And let me take the famous example of ING Direct. Yeah, which was founded and started 20 years ago, and you can can say it's it was the first fintech uh, in in the banking industry. And um, with, with ING Direct, we really changed the way retail customers can do banking and appreciate banking. And uh, so we, we always looked for new ways how to uh, make banking more convenient to the customer, but also more profitable. Yeah? And, and we have clearly uh, seen that um, we, we um, yeah, can rock the boat and can dis- disrupt the industry by daring to do things differently. And I, I still remember when I started in, in 1998 and we looked into the opportunities in Germany, um, the, the consultancy uh, firms told us maximum potential in Germany for this kind of direct banking is one million people, one million people. And now we have a bank that is already exceeding way above the nine million, yeah, with way more potential because... Um, Often it's underestimated the, the, the power if you really do things um, way more convenient for people so that they don't have to go to branches anymore, yeah? that they can do it every moment they, they want to and not dependent on, on, on people that have opening hours or whatever um, and, and do it with today with a couple of clicks or with your voice or whatever. That makes all the difference. So... Um, before before going into more detail, um, let, let explain to, to the people who are listening or watching us who maybe are not familiar with this kind of concepts. Mm-hmm. What does it mean for you uh, to think of uh, ING services as a platform and what is in this expression beyond banking? Yeah, very good. Um, let me start with the letter beyond banking. Um, yeah, in the word is already that we don't want to limit um, ourselves when we when we serve and hopefully excite our customers to the simple banking products. Yeah, a current account, a savings account, a credit, and maybe some security uh, opportunities. We want to go beyond that, and um, our intention is to empower people to stay ahead in life and in business and concretely linked to financial matters that mean that we want to empower them to have a better grip on their financial matters all their financial matters not just the products they have with us yeah but really be in control of all their financial matters um, and that they make better financial decisions and that is true of course for the retail customers but also for the corporates 
and we see a lot of needs um, everywhere where, where the people today don't feel served perfectly in these two areas. And so we go beyond this banking um, products and offer services that help them to do that. Get a complete overview, yeah. Um, shift money where it makes the most sense, um, never to miss payments, um, but also, for example, subscription manager, yeah, or um, in in housing, look into how you can can find the the, the right um, uh, place to live that you can afford because it has a huge impact and so on. There are multiple opportunities and and uh, possibilities there. Yeah. And the second part, platforms. Um, yeah, the, the, it, it's it's a word that that um, uh, people often understand differently. So it's good that you asked that that question because indeed most people who talk about platforms uh, talk about the technical platform, the technical infrastructure. Everything is running on one platform, but that's not what what um, I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is a platform business model which is something different than the traditional banking model, where it's all about value creation by coming up with a banking product or services, offering it to the customer, serving the customers, yeah, and, and um, perfect the processes along the way by doing so. While a platform business model means that you offer a platform where others can offer their services and um, yeah, a multi-sided uh, business model where the value creation is by facilitating the interactions between producers and consumers and ensure yeah, that the, the right parties uh, find each other and that the interaction is really smoothless, instant and, and um, valuable for them. So, because you mentioned that um, um, it's not it's not about a technical platform, but um, um, platform as an ecosystem, platform as a connection opportunity for uh, businesses and people to to connect. Uh, um, it's sometimes misunderstood what the platform True. is. Maybe sometimes it's used like a buzzword. Um, mm -hmm. So let's settle what is a platform and what is not a platform? Yeah, yeah. So um, let me start with what is not a platform, uh, because um, some people think just by um, allowing others to offer a product, yeah, yeah, not only have your own products, but offer products from someone else as well, you already are a platform. But that is not the case. It's still you and your partners yeah, offering um, and have the direct relationship with the customers. The, the platform means that you invite really as many producers as possible. Yeah, in this case, um, uh, corporates who can offer banking products, services, financial products and services and beyond. Yeah, and all come to your platform to offer their, their services and on the consumer side to attract as many consumers as possible who are um, interested in this. And the big advantage is, of course, that by embracing that platform game, you can ensure that whoever comes to your platform always find a fitting solution because you are no longer restricted to your own product or that of a, par uh, of a partner. And the whole um, platform thinking, the whole business requires also different mindset, different skills, because it's no longer about you and your products. It's about the different parties that are on your platform to help them find each other and interact with each other. So you, you have the outside optimization, what's going on, instead of the internal process optimization that you need to take care of. So you mentioned that um, uh, you mentioned about ING Direct and um, how the consultants told you that you have just one million people interested in this product. So um, um, stretching a bit uh, after that and uh, to our current days, um, what are the biggest challenges for you uh, as a group to implement this strategy of going towards a, a, a platform? Uh, Maybe because uh, there's a misconception about about the banking industry uh, that it's a closed ecosystem, 
So, mm. or it was a closed ecosystem, every bank with its customers, its secrets there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a very good point. And uh, let me be very honest here. That that is not an easy journey. Yeah, you just think, oh, let's become a platform, and a year later you are one. Yeah, I said th this is really something different, and um, it's especially hard for incumbents and successful incumbents to to go through that transformation. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. So if you if you look at um, uh, a lot of the successful big platforms, they started as a platform. Yeah. While we start being a bank, and um, so. If, if you if you look at Forbes, yeah, they they are telling us we are the best bank in the world, yeah. So we are a successful bank, and we don't want to throw that away. So the the art is how can we combine our strengths and our assets that we have, and add the platform opportunities to it to serve the customer better because that, that is always what drives us, and that is also our strengths we can build on. It's about ensuring that we do the best for, for our uh, customers. And we have a great, great start, to be honest, because we have um, uh, almost 40 million um, customers, which is a consumer side, but we also have a lot of great relationships with big corporates, with small and medium enterprises. So we also have a lot of contacts um, through the producer side. Yeah, so we have a good head start of, of bringing both together. But it requires really that we embrace it and not focusing on our products alone, but really on the ecosystem thinking. So in, in order to start that and make it happen, um, we, we needed some, some help, some Kickstarter. Yeah? And uh, we, we looked into experts um, who really understand this platform ecosystem and what is necessary, what are the pitfalls to help us yeah, start running, and and that 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 was very important. And the other thing that was very important is uh, that we have have the support really from the top. Otherwise, you can't make it. If if the board is not convinced this is the right direction and supports you on that, yeah, don't even start this massive transformation. Yeah, but yeah. if you are successful, uh, it can be very rewarding. Yeah, as you as you have seen with Ping An, for example, who exactly as a as an incumbent yeah in, in traditional insurance company has gone through that mm -hmm. transformation so this can be huge yeah that's a great inspiration i'm glad that you mentioned uh, about integrated and uh, integrating different services and finding the best services for people and i read in, in an interview that you gave um, this year that one of the most important thing is not to be solely focused on ING products and services, your own yeah. internal products, but also looking uh, broadly to external services. What can you bring to people? And uh, I want to uh, jump into this, uh, this thinking on yeah. how do you find the right services and how do you approach them to integrate them uh, better for, for the customers? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very good point. Um, and there, there are two different things. And the, uh, let me start with a small step. Yeah, um, where, where you test the waters uh, with with platforms, um, and that is um, when you don't have the fitting product, that you then work together with a platform to ensure that the customer nevertheless ends up happily with the right product for him. Yeah, and a, and a great example is that um, I don't know how many years ago we started that um, in mortgages. Yeah, we we um, are also owner of a, of a, um, the biggest and and um, yeah uh, most referred to um, mortgage broker in Germany. So so we together ensure that the customer is always happy. Yeah. So when when someone starts a journey with ING, wants to have a mortgage, and we can't provide the fitting one because, for example, 100% financing, yeah, or wants to f uh, finance an object that that uh, is not in scope, then we refer him to Interhub, and Interhub has access to more than 500 banks. So yeah, for sure, he, he um, they will find uh, uh, something. So that is a that is the first yeah small step into working together with platforms and and um, familiarize with it um, so always a fitting solution 
um, if if you take the next step, yeah, um, how do you find this adjacent services beyond banking uh, services that make sense for your customer? Yeah, it, it, it starts with asking the customer. Yeah, and we have what we called a pace methodology, so a special innovation methodology to ensure that it's not about us in idea. Yeah, oh, I have a great idea. Let's build it and and see if someone likes it. But it really all starts with understanding customer pain points and customer gain points. And um, if we um, focus on one area, yeah, let's take housing. Yeah, we put an international team of people together, mapping the whole journey end to end, from searching for a home, buying a home, moving in, owning the home to selling, and start with um, yeah, in understanding what could be potential pain and gain points along the journey, and we found multiple. <laughs> yeah, but then then it starts really that we that we um, form hypothesis. Okay, this could be really a pain point. Yeah. Um, finding a home, um, because usually you are dependent on what is listed at that moment in time at the listing company, yeah, at, at the at the listing platform. So we tested that, yeah. Um, what 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 really as a customer, yeah, what keeps you awake at night? What what yeah are, are your pain points? And starting from that validation, when we truly find something, wow, this is an unsolved problem. Then we work on the solution. Okay, but how can we solve that? Yeah, and um, continuing that example, um, that was how how um, we came up with the idea of Scopity, which is um, a new platform that we just started uh, in Germany um, last week. We pushed the button for the Germany rollout, um, and this tackles this in transparency that you don't know is it a good offer or bad offer. And um, that enables that you increase the, the, the market by showing all property prices in the market. Not only what is listed at that moment, but really you see for every single property in Germany, you see the valuation. And as an owner, you are, of course, curious what is your, your house worth. And we have extremely high activation rates of owners who, who go to the platform to look for that. But the owners can also um, put a open for offer. Yeah, even if at that moment in time they are not working with a real estate broker because they don't know yet if they really want to sell or not. Yeah, and on the on the buyer side, um, you can put kind of virtual postcards. Yeah, I really want to live here. Yeah, in that area, and um, I see the listing price is 320. You know what? I really want to live here. I pay you 380. And maybe then the owner is interested and you create an additional market. Yeah. So these kind of examples starting from a customer pain point. Yeah. In transparency, not a lot of objects available. Started this idea. It's validated. Yeah. You start um, building a pilot. You test it. Um, you increase and improve engagement and, and the journey continues. Yeah. That's quite fascinating, actually. Yeah, and uh, it's it's uh, a very complex process from from what I can understand uh, right now to to find um, those needs of the customers. And I was thinking, um, how do you? Uh, because for for a big company, for a big group, it's uh, sometimes um, an easier way to think that if a customer needs something, they're gonna build it for for the customer. So. The platform um, thinking, uh, I suppose it's not just building uh, in-house products, but finding the right products that already exist on the market and integrating them. And how do you make this decision of, are we going to develop this ourselves or we're going to find some, some very good uh, product that is already on the market and mm -hmm. try to integrate it? Yeah. Very, very valuable and, and important point that you are covering there, because indeed, um, when, whatever you, you start uh, building or uh, developing or whatever, you always should ask this, what, what is the best approach built by a partner? And ING is really embracing all three. 
Um, so as soon as we have clarity about this, what, what solution is really solving the customer problems that we have identified, the first thing is that together with our fintech college, uh, colleagues, we screen the markets. Is there already someone out there who provides that solution that we have uh, uh, detected? And if that's the case, we immediately connect with them and, and look if we, we can join forces. Yeah, and um, partially it's it's really then a partnership, or um, we we take a stake in them to also help them grow, because that is something um, that we often find that that fintechs have great solutions, but they have difficulties to scale. They are simply too small then to serve millions of customers. So they really appreciate if we also help them with funding their growth as well, to, so that together we can grow. So that is also something we, we, we love to do. Um, and, and Fintonic is, is uh, one of the multiple examples uh, here, um, or Twisto, uh, both great solutions, but struggled to grow. And we gave them access also to our customers and to new markets and help them grow. Um, so that is definitely something we love to do. And only if we can't find partner or um, uh, buy solutions, then we develop it ourselves. So um, first, first it was uh, in, in, in the last few years, it was about uh, um, uh, giving a more digital approach to banking. Uh, today we are talking about an open ecosystem, um, integrating as much um, into, into the main product or offering different products to the, to the people. So I think the, 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 the next step um, um, is, is having this, this big ecosystem. So yeah. because you mentioned some, some, some examples of how do you approach this uh, strategy of going beyond banking, um, can you give us some more examples of how this works um, for customers in different countries? Uh, what mm -hmm. kind of products? have you integrated in, inside the yeah. platform? Yeah. Um, there maybe it's good to understand that that we we look into three different platform plays, you can say. One is to become a platform player ourselves by opening up, yeah, um, S-I-N-G, and, and um, yeah, offer platform solutions ourselves. And there, the housing ecosystem is indeed a very good example that we have started to build with Scopity, with Interhub. Um, we also have uh, in, uh, a company that in the platform proposition that we started for renovation. And all of them will be an interconnected, will form an interconnected um, ecosystem. Yeah, so that, that is the example for that one. We also look for, for more disruptive, really independent platforms. And there, YOLT or Cobase are a great example. And um, uh, those are already international. Yeah, let's take YOLT. Um, it's, a, it's a money management app that indeed helps you to get a complete grip of all financial matters, make better financial uh, choices. And we have um, it now rolled out in, in four countries. Um, what we what we see there is there are some propositions which which you can offer quite easily cross border yeah um, for for example money management due to uh, now PSD2 the API connection and everything you can can offer it cross border quite easily there are still a lot of, of things to be done don't get me wrong there yeah but for example um, housing needs um, way more localization than money management. Yeah. So you really also have to look at, at the areas. But even there, the, the principles of Scopity, yeah, that you create the transparency, that you facilitate that that owners and, and uh, buyers can can find each other also outside the typical real estate uh, approach um, is still applicable. But then you need the local parties to make it happen and the local specialties and, and embed them. Then. Yeah? But you still can use the same technical platform and the same platform principles. Yeah? Or um, DealWise is another example in, in shopping that you have relevant 
discounts and not the spam of yeah meaningless uh, ones uh, where where you bring the the right um, uh, shoppers and uh, um, companies uh, together with right retailers um, find each other to um, help saving money when you when you uh, uh, shop that is something we easily can offer cross border yeah and we be just rolling it out uh, international um, and the last platform play is that we are offer our capabilities or products on other platforms yeah that that um, our our customers love to use and um, those usually are international yeah so it it, it really depends on the platform uh, play and also on the kind of offer how easy or difficult it is to um, scale it international I'm glad that you um, um, that you are talking about about this uh, international uh, scaling and finding the right markets. Um, and as we know, the EU is a one single market, but it has its pain points. Um, yeah. And you can you can see them in communication, in in uh, uh, money, in the in how how the money travels. So how do you choose uh, when when uh, uh, developing this kind of products, the right market to start with, yeah. and the right markets to expand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Um, so indeed, uh, the pace methodology that I talked about has a so-called market fit phase, where exactly these uh, kind of questions are tackled. Because if you are sure this is a pain point you want to solve, if you are sure now we know the right solutions, we've built the right solution, tested it, it's appreciated, then it's all about finding the right market to start it, to ensure that, that it has sufficient growth potential, yeah, um, and that also business cases behind it can materialize. And uh, there it helps that, that we, ING is, is in 41 countries. Yeah, so that, that helps, of course, tremendously that we have that international um, network and, and know a lot of, market, of the markets ourselves, know the dynamics there, the specialties, how fragmented is a market, yeah, what players are already active there. Um, and we, we um, use our colleagues and again supported by, by the fintech teams um, to, to map the countries, to detect the hotspots, yeah, which countries makes the most sense to start and what will be then the countries to follow. Mm. So when talking, about, uh, when talking about platforms, we are in an era where um, big platforms are developing, not only in, in banking and beyond banking, but we, we see this in e-commerce, we see this in um, I don't know, social networking and so yeah. on and so forth. Um, one of the issues maybe of the platforms is that they are very useful for the user, for the end user, but they are, um, uh, let's say, not very liked in the market because they tend to become too big. They tend to control too much. So as bank, as a bank in the end, uh, I think that trust is it's the most important thing. So how do you maintain while growing uh, in different areas than people can think? Um, how do you maintain the trust and maybe the ethical approach to, yeah. um, to grow? important point important point because that that is indeed something i think where where we as banks um can help the consumers to to stay in control also of everything that is linked to privacy and and data and to know what's what's going on so that is indeed a guiding principle of us that we are extremely aware of the the um, customer um, and and his uh, wishes and and uh, privacy is is an important part of it, and and the art is of course on on one hand a customer wants convenience yeah with and and only um, relevant offers which implies that you know what the customer needs at that moment so you need to work with data and insights to get it right while on the other hand um, the customer wants um, to to reduce data exchange and and um, uh, analysis um, to to what is really required. 
And the good news is, um, if you take it from there, it's possible to find that sweet spot. And let me use uh, the example of Dealwise again, where I mentioned that we that we um, in, ensure that the customer only gets relevant offers. So how do we do that? Um, we have uh, we give the the customer general access to to discounts via programs that are in the market without any personalization. So we don't need to look into your transaction data. But what we do is offer you as a customer. If you only want to see offers that um, are from the shops, you you will purchase something regularly. Yeah, please give us access to your transactional data, and we will ensure that you only see those offers. Do you want that? Yes or no? Yeah. So the cu customer then have a clear understanding: Why should I grant access to data? Yeah, and what do I get from that? And there we see that a customer love that. Yeah, the transparency and um, they, they are willing to grant access. It's not that, that they are uh, opposing that that um, data is used. But I think what, what they don't like is if it's if they don't know what's really happening, what are they really doing with the data? Are they selling it or whatever? Yeah, and that is indeed where we as bank can help because we have very um, strong uh, regu regulatory uh, foundation, which already ensures that we are very compliant, but we go beyond that by, for example, in, um, we have a data ethics committee. Yeah. So before starting device, we also not only ensure that legally everything is fine yeah, and we do the data consent management correctly, but it was also about talking about are that ethical dilemmas where something is legally okay, but maybe it ethically not okay. Yeah, or where the customer feels mm -hmm. not okay, or the merchant doesn't feel okay. And we discuss that with the colleagues, yeah, who challenge us to ensure that we get it right. So there is a really extreme high conscious um, uh, that that uh, yeah, we, we we are doing the right thing for the for the consumers here. I know that you um, um, in in ING as a group you have different departments. Uh, you mentioned about uh, the the fintech department. Um, you also have the venture brand uh, a branch which looks uh, yeah. at investments. So, but just talking a bit about fintechs, also in maybe uh, being being a journalist in the last few years, it was about yeah. this fight between the banks and the fintechs. But nowadays, in in the last year maybe, it's all about let's see how can we work together. Yeah, um, true. So, um, how 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 do you see this uh, this point of banks and fintechs working together? What's what's the strategy as a group? Yeah. Um, let me start with ING. Uh, we 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 really love. Uh, working together with fintechs, as I as I mentioned uh, before, um, fintechs um, often have great solutions because they are focusing on one part that um, the current players have not solved perfectly yet, and they really focusing on get that one thing right. Yeah, while we um, have the ambition to serve the customer um, perfectly in total. So by by um, using this parts where yeah, one fintech got that part right, the other fintech got that part right, yeah, and the next one then by, by joining forces, we can ensure that together we serve the, the customers perfectly. That that is the beauty of it. Yeah. So the the, the fintech benefits by having um, the distribution power, yeah, and and uh, the the uh, cross supports. And we offer by, uh, pro, um, profit by offering something great to our customers. So it's it's clear a win-win. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and I think observing and talking to other uh, bank colleagues, um, they they also realize more and more that they are not the enemy at all. They they it's it's smart to connect with them. Yeah, and support each other to to do the right thing for the customer. Yeah. Um, and uh, another another point that you mentioned, it was about money management and mm -hmm. financial education is brought up um, very often when yeah. talking 
with with people from the from from the banks from the financial uh, yeah. industries um how can you help basically people uh having more control over their money because i f- yeah. i think this that in the last few years it was this switch from um uh, preponderant cash based uh, uh, life to mm. to a more digital and it's become more complicated to manage mm. the money yeah yeah good point and uh, indeed um, we do some international surveys surveys and we find um, that throughout um, Europe um, most people want to have a better control of their financial life but they struggle with it yeah so the the financial illiteracy yeah so that they don't fully understand what are my choices and the implications of their choices it's it's extremely high and and that is indeed why um, we have set on the agenda to em- empower people to to make better financial choices and have a better grip on it and we we are measuring that um, and supporting the customers um, on the one hand um, with with some tools and it can be very very small tools like in in um, the Netherlands we have um, uh, uh, which means it gives you insights for the rest of the month what what um, is to be expected yeah what 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 money will disappear from your account yeah and um, uh, because of of um, uh, di- direct debits that, that are going to happen and um, so that the customer gets an early warning signal if most probably at the end of the month the, the account will be in the red yeah so that early enough the customer can do some things about it yeah so, so small things like that are how to help customers to save and that is something that is that is now in corona crisis even more critical yeah people want to be able to save that but they struggle how to do it so tips to show where all the money goes to yeah so every day yeah buying a coffee instead of brewing your coffee yeah it, we show it, how much it adds up per month per year yeah so that is something where you can then start saving small things yeah or round up is a good example you purchase something yeah and and the pennies till the the whole euro uh, are saved for you yeah and guess what yeah in in a year it it is nice money you can can put aside Uh, but also bigger things like um looking at your your investment portfolio that you have yeah compared to what you really want your risk appetite how higher um, when will you need the money what what um, kind of risk um, are you comfortable with we analyze what you have yeah and give you tips how to um, ensure that it's both are in sync yeah so it's it's the small things and the big things where we can help and the last thing is that that we also work together with unity uh, with universities and other players to think also in education how we can help yeah we have some programs in in, in um, countries where we also um, help help schools that are already kids get a better understanding um, of of money yeah so the the opportunities are, are multiple and um, we have measured that that uh, indeed uh, customers with ing feel way more financially empowered than those of other banks. So obviously, all the, the, the sum of all these small and, and big measures um, have impact. And we are very happy about it. And we, we will continue to look how, how to achieve that. At the end of our conversation, I want to jump into not, not an, um, an exercise in imagination, but maybe an exercise in reality. And I want to ask you, in your opinion, how will the bank of the future will look like? <laughs> great, great question. And my answer is, <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, because um, <laughs> if, if you, if, who, who, who would have predicted the situation we are in right now with, with Corona? Yeah, um, 
who, who ha could have predicted uh, when there was uh, the age of the Nokia and Ericsson that the player like Apple can disrupt them in, in eight years? Yeah, and, and take, yeah, they, they had 90% of the whole profit pool of the industry, this big ones, and Apple just stole it away from them. Yeah, these, these things you, you can't predict. So I don't know. But, but what I know is that it's, it's essential to be agile enough. Um, to ensure that you always adjust to the new reality, yeah. So that that you are flexible enough to mm -hmm. offer what customers and the platform uh, players are really needing and expecting, and deliver it. Katarina, thank you very much for for this uh, lovely conversation and insights into the strategy and to beyond banking, and um, I I hope to to hear more about new products and new innovation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. And thank you all for listening or viewing the Curious Ryan podcast brought to you by ING. Drop us a line if it was interesting. If you have a need that the banks didn't um, uh, please re uh, until now, uh, it's not a scientific um, research, but hey, we're just a podcast. Mm -hmm. I was Vlad Andreescu. Thank you very much.